Hey folks, uh, in honor of uh, 1,000 YouTube subscribers, I said that I would do a live stream. Um, so we did this on Twitch, which uh, which went pretty well. Um, we're speeding through the flats now, and as soon as this is done, we'll jump right into the live stream. So um, hopefully we can make this sort of a regular, regular thing. I really enjoyed it. I did these flats before uh, we actually started the live stream just for the sake of time and you guys should know how to do this at this point. So um, enjoy the live stream and uh, hopefully we'll be doing another again soon. This is the first one I've ever done live, so we'll just fill it out, I guess. See how it goes. Um, this is a drawing by a friend of mine, uh, Mike Dunbar. This is a sketch he put up uh, on DeviantArt. And I pretty much have um, free reign to color any of his sketches. Uh, He's the guy that did, uh, he did Mocking Dead, I think, uh, for Dynamite, which is a very funny book. And I'm thinking we're going to make this sort of a, um, kind of a, maybe a sun, sunset, or I mean not quite sunset, but late in the day picture here. So I'm just using a soft brush, nothing fancy here. Um, in the background first. I like to work on backgrounds first just because I find them the most boring. So and then sometimes I'll take the lasso tool like this and just change the feather to 25 or 50 and uh, kind of get some some cloud action going on there. It really doesn't matter too much at this point what it looks like, to be honest with you. Just trying to get the color of the background and the light sources and kind of a ballpark idea. And uh, I don't know if you guys have watch my YouTube channel or not, uh, what I'm doing to select an area to render is I'm just highlighting the flats. I've got my flats here. I duplicated that on just on top and call it colors. Then I select the area that I want to color and I've got a uh, uh, action set to F4. So when I press that, it just puts it on a new layer and locks the transparency. I think Command J or Control J does the same thing, but I'm 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 terrible with um, um, shortcuts. Um, I tend to set up just uh, default, change all the defaults, and um, to something that makes sense for me, something that I can remember. And this, this orange that I'm using, uh, like if I pick a color, I, I tend to make sure I save that as a swatch. It's, it's off the screen, but uh, you can't see it, but it helps me to um, keep track of what color my light is and that kind of thing. And then after I'm done rendering, um, or at least for the moment, we'll merge that back down. And I'll probably end up coming back to the ground again probably the sky as well. And sometimes I'll just use gradients um, to brighten it up too. Still the same orange color in the screen mode. And this is a pretty low res sketch so you uh, you may be able to see kind of all the jagged parts of it if you look closely. But I 
Oh, I just realized I've still got the feather set to something else. <laughs> so make sure it's set to zero if you're going to be adding cuts, sharp cuts anyway. And if you just joined us, I woke up today very sick, um, as you can probably tell. Um, I'm going to do my best here. I've got some water close by, so if you hear me, my apologies for all the noise from the ice and all that. I also have a habit of working um, on all of the little accessories and things first on and clothing and all of those type things and I tend to save skin for last. Um, I'm not sure why I think it just um, it tends to be the most fun to render to me faces and things like that so I, I usually save that for last. I'm actually keeping this same same orange color uh, on all of this right now. I really want to keep that pretty pretty uniform. Because really my light source is pretty, uh, it's, it's kind of up top, really there's not a whole lot of shadow in this thing, but a little bit under here, uh, let's see. yeah there's just not a lot of, of, of drop shadows, so it's pretty wide open as far as how you want to color this, there's no real um, the super defined light source or anything like there can be in some pieces. And I, I did flat this obviously before before we started today, just for the sake of time, since flatting is sort of boring to watch. Now I've got videos on flatting already. I'm going to try to keep this pretty monotone, a lot of browns and grays and, and brown, I mean, oranges and that sort of thing. And for um, things that shine and gold and things like that, I usually um, we use color dodge instead of uh, screen. Is that glow a little bit brighter?
everyone that's listening now, um, are you guys all um, following YouTube or where did you hear about the uh, video, the live stream? Just out of curiosity. The handle's a little bit too close to the uh, coat of the bracer, so desaturate that a little bit. If you just joined us, I apologize for the way that I sound. I woke up very sick today, so I'm trying to suffer through it here. This is a uh, drawing by Max Dunbar. And if you're listening in, um, like I said, feel free to log in to um, Twitch um, and ask questions if you like. I'm uh, probably going to try Google Hangouts again next time. It just, or last, uh, yeah, next time. It just was not, was not, <coughs> excuse me, was not working for me the way that I uh, wanted it to. So I tried this today and. And maybe next time we do a hangout. Um, I just couldn't quite figure out how to get the chat to work. But apparently, if you if you start it from a hangout instead of starting it from YouTube, then it works better, supposedly. Well, I'm trying to find a color that I like right now. I don't, for some reason, I don't like to do it that way. There we go. For just joining us, welcome. Um, 
I mean, it was, uh, well, you can call me Kurt, but I go by, I usually credit it as K. Michael Russell, but <clears throat> try Googling Kurt Russell and finding me. I dare you. Got a new video, a uh, new YouTube video is going to be coming out tomorrow um, called How Not to Color Comics. <laughs> you know, uh, just saw a lot of, I don't mean that to, to bash on anybody, but I kept seeing the same, a lot of the same problems and the same mistakes being made. And um, so trying to, uh, trying to rectify that. It was a lot of fun because I actually did kind of color the wrong way for parts of it to sort of show the contrast. Not, not that uh, I don't mean to say that what I'm doing is the right way and the only way, of course, is there's a million different ways to color comics, but there's a lot of very common mistakes um, that, um, that I see made that easy to avoid. And this is a pretty rough uh, sketch drawing, so it's pretty rough coloring too. I'm still not crazy about the color of whatever in the hell this is. I think I'm just not crazy about the rendering, honestly. I think it would be in more shadow than it is now.
another trick you can do is uh, put a uh, a color layer type on top of everything and fill it with black and it'll give you a grayscale version of whatever you're doing and you can sort of see how your values are looking and um, I don't think he's really separated enough from the background so I want to try to rectify that and you can actually I want to keep that same orange color that I was using and just put a gradient on and actually uh, look at it while I'm in grayscale and when I go back you can see the see the difference there um, So, the background's looking a little bland. We'll get to that in a little bit. And I'm going to treat him as if he's getting lit pretty much from the top. That's pretty much the very first thing you should ask yourself before you start coloring anything is where is the light source? Because you really can't do any rendering until you see that. Until you figure that out. And in some pieces it's easier to figure out than others. Um, in others um, it's really up to you. It just depends on the line art and how um, how much of it the color of the uh, the um, pencil are actually is giving you. Sometimes some will give you more to work with than others. Keep in mind too, another really, and I addressed this in the video that's coming out tomorrow, um, is that not every muscle uh, is, is lit with the exact same amount of light. Um, it's another really common mistake that It's, it's, sometimes it's tough to pick out your light source because everything is lit so uniformly. So you want to try to avoid that.
if you just got here, I've got a, a color layer filled with black on top. And I can use that to check values to see if the right things stand out, the right amount, things like that. Um, it's really not bright enough yet, I don't think. Not, not for my taste. I really think he's a little, he's just too close to the background. That's the problem. The color's a little too similar. But we can fix that. background, do some color balance adjustments here. I think it's just the saturation level is the same, I think is the problem. In yeah, much better. That's one one easy way to separate your your planes, your foreground, your background is to uh, it can't all be the same level of saturation. I think that's what I've really done wrong there. You'll notice I tend to use the, the edge of the brush too, um, as opposed to right on the um, in the middle of the brush. You can, you, it's an easy way to get a nice little fade that way. Now the, let's see, I'm not crazy about this section here. I'd like to get some feedback from you guys um, for the next uh, video. The crowd's a little small tonight, but I guess you gotta start somewhere.
And one thing you can do also is if your light, like in this case, the light is it's, a, it's warm, it's a warm light, um, you can make your shadows uh, cool and like blues and purples and that sort of thing. Um, and that will create some separation also. So one, one kind of trick for that is, like in this case, I can select all the areas that I haven't done any uh, rendering in, any lighting in, and use that to uh, come back in with a, a fill light of a different color, like in this maybe blue or purple. You can do that in every, in every each part. Use that same shadow color, or, or you can go in and and just do another set of cuts here. And this time, instead of using screen mode, I'm just using normal mode like a bluish color. Well, if there's something else you guys would rather see on the on the next video, just let me know. Um, like I said, I'm sort of open to suggestions here since this is the first one. I really haven't watched too many of these type of videos, so. It's kind of all of me at this point. And let's see, I'm getting pretty close to being finished with the rendering here. Um, I'll probably throw in some textures over the top. Get to that in just a second. So what I would usually do is find like some clouds or dust or something like that to throw in the background. So my other monitor, I'm looking for something there. And I always try to make sure that it's someone that doesn't mind you using them. So 
So I'll show you what I found here. This uh, sort of billowy cloud stuff going on here. Just going to take that and I'll make a new layer under my line art but over my color and call it textures. And we're going to paste that in there. It's pretty low res but I'm going to mess with this and so we can get it how we, how we want it. Um, So I'm just going to kind of blur the entire layer here. I really just kind of want it to hint, to hint that there's something there, but it's not really show anything. And then I'm going to grab the, I selected the sky. And then if you invert it, invert the selection delete everything else and now we're just left with the texture which doesn't match the background at all so we need to work on that um, I'm going to set this to overlay and right away I actually I actually like that quite a bit um, This section over here needs to be lightened up a little bit. And what I'm doing here is I'm just checking these values to make sure that, and this is getting a bit technical probably but um, if you haven't watched the color picking video yet then you should check that out but you want to make sure for some reason well now Photoshop is not oh wrong color that's why um, you want to make sure I can't talk and paint at the same time. Um, you want to make sure that the the color that you the, the darkest shadows are all. If you're looking at the, the color slider, that the amount of K is is no more than about 25 or 30. Um, if you haven't watched that new video on YouTube on color picking, check that out. It'll explain that a bit. It'll look great on the screen, and then. Um, when you get to um, your actual print, it will muddy up if your colors are very dark like that. And I'm trying to decide if I want to put a grass texture in here. I think I do. And again, just making sure you're getting your textures from a, a site that allows you to use their textures. Um, so I found that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna change this and call it sky texture, and we'll call this one grass texture. And you can see it's very green. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to grab the ground, invert the selection, delete everything else, and then change the mode on that texture layer to overlay. And I'm going to lower the opacity this time a lot. 
um, about 25 percent or so and it's a little too green for my taste so I'm going to desaturate that a bit because I really just want the texture I don't really want the color and now we've got a nice little grass texture in there and it's easy to overdo textures um, really another really common issue I guess with coloring um, we're getting pretty close to wrapping this up I think um, I'm going to try to change the color of some of the lines now just a few um, and I have a an action for that as well it basically just copies the ink onto a new channel an alpha channel and then selects that channel and then uh, locks the transparency so that whatever I do is not going to affect anything else. Then I can just grab big sections, hit colorize, and then just lighten it a bit. And you can see it. Uh, maybe you can see that. It's pretty <laughs> it's hard to see. But I lightened it just a little bit. Same thing uh, on these flags in the background. I want to push these back a little bit. So, and this is a pencil sketch, so you have to be sort of careful. Um, the lines aren't really that clean. But I just want to push that back a bit more. And um, you can even do a little bit um, over, again, over everything here. I'm going to call this layer from dust. And I do have a pretty good brush for this. Um, and I don't remember where I got it from, but somewhere on DeviantArt or something. Um, I'm looking down the list now for way too many brushes that I have. <laughs> a little overkill there, a lot overkill there. I'm changing, I put a new layer on top of everything, change the um, layer type to screen. I don't know if I like this or not. Maybe a little bit. It's subtle, but yeah, I don't think I like it. Maybe just try a gradient instead. And I can do that on top of the from this angle too. And I just saw your message, sorry about that. Let's see, uh, Corey is asking, he says, styles with a lot of textures can be interesting, but it's not the best thing to do when you're learning. And I agree with that. Um, how do you change your coloring when you're working with more sketchy line art is what he's asking. Um, Really, um, you know, your cuts just don't have to be quite as as clean. Um, you know, this whole thing, I really wasn't zoomed up really closely for very much of it. Um, 
because you know this is just for practice and it's not um if this was going in a book this would take a lot more time to do um, i make sure that all of my everything was very specific but um but that's that's really it um yeah there was um i won't say the name of the book but a, a friend of mine is um was able to work on a, a, a really big name book um big enough that there have been movies about it uh, pretty successful movies and um the colorist that he he worked with was um he's been coloring for a while but just really completely and i'm not I'm not one to easily talk bad about colors but he really just really overdid textures completely um everything had a texture on it um there was dust in the air that had a concrete texture on it <laughs> so um be very careful with with textures um with something like like this um you know i just used a little bit on the grass there um just to make it a little bit interesting i mean you have to look really close to even see um, to even see it, but it does create a little bit more interest. Um, and even with something like this, um, you may want to find like um, let's see if I can find a good leather texture. Which is probably not the most awesome thing for a or what are these things called? Minotaurs to wear? Could be one of his friend's skin or something. But um, we'll do one more uh, one more texture for that. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. So Just sort of on all of the areas like his uh, gauntlets and the uh, shoulder pad and the, the belt and all of that. Um, I'm just going to stick that right there. And I think the key is just to be subtle. <laughs> be subtle with everything. I'm going to select uh, all of those areas. And inverse. I'm terrible at remembering shortcuts. Gone to whoops. Didn't inverse it. So obviously this is a bit much. Um, again, we'll set it to overlay. What that's going to do is that's going to let the light and shadow come through, and then lower the opacity down dramatically again it's really barely there um just enough to um that when you back off of it uh, you can see a little bit of texture there but um but it's a real easy way to to put textures in it, like i said the key is just to not go crazy um it does change the uh the color a bit um you can see it's a little bit more saturated now than it was so i'm gonna take the saturation down all the way actually because I don't want any of that coming through and uh, let's see I really like that um, I'm trying to think there's anywhere else we can put it without ever doing it but that's probably good enough well, um, it's been about an hour. Um, Walking Dead's about to start, and I'm sure someone wants to watch that. So, um, thanks so much for coming. Um, like I said, the turnout was small, but for the first time, I was happy. I was shooting for five people, and we have six right now, so uh, I'll take it. Um, and hopefully we can do uh, something like this pretty soon. Um, I've got a really big announcement coming up in about two weeks. Um, it's my first monthly book. I'm very excited about it. Um, it's, uh, it's that image, which I'm also very excited about. It's my first gig there. So, um, I wish I could tell you what it was, but I've been threatened with death by hanging if I say anything at this point. So, um, we got that news coming out soon. Um, I've got the, uh, how not to color video coming out tomorrow. Um, and then I've got another video I'm aiming for about a week or two 
from now on um, really trying to figure out the black magic that uh, Marta Gracia is using, the colorist on all new X-Men and Amazing X-Men. Uh, just really, really cool style, and I sort of try to try to figure that out, um, just to have a different style um, and um, try to see how he does things a little bit differently. So um, thanks again for coming, and uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Uh, leave some comments. Let me know uh, what you think. Thanks.